bring our 2011 Can-Am Commander back for some final fixes. We beef up the steering with an electric power steering kit and throw some light on the subject with a large LED light bar today on Truck U. I just love the way this thing looks. It, it just looks fast and mean sitting here. <laughs> it is fast and mean, and it's a lot of fun to drive, too. This was one of our favorite projects that we did not too long ago, the Can-Am Commander. We ripped out all the stock suspension, installed the kit from FST Motorsports, and radically changed the whole thing. It's an all-new beast, man. It is a blast. You know, from the factory, these things are really fast in a straight line. The yeah. problem is, is the weight and balance isn't really good when you go and hit turns and stuff. We actually had an issue where Matt had rolled it, a couple other people had rolled it. You know, but I think we've got it all settled out now. I can't wait to drive this thing. It's dialed in now, and like you said, it's fast. It's mean. The only issue is it's so wide now that when you're turning it, it's a little bit of work. You know, it's a little bit hard to turn. What do so. you mean it's work? It's, it's an off-road vehicle. It should be a little work. You just got to be a man. I'm just telling. I don't, it's not about being a man. It's about being challenging to turn. Muscle it up, son. Oh, Come on now. Brooksy. Hey, What's man. Happening? How you doing? Hey, Brooksy. Bruno. Bruno. Bruno Brooks, nice to meet you. Yeah. You too, buddy. Brooksy's the cat that owns it. All right? Oh, okay. yours? Yeah. Yes, sir. Cool. Brooksy, what do you think of the suspension? It's man? absolutely awesome. Yeah? Aggressive? You can do Aggressive. what you want to do? The only thing about it, it's a little hard to turn. Oh, you, I'm sorry. What was that? A little bit of work to turn. It's hard to you turn, know, Brooksy, he said. I was just telling the same thing I could imagine. You know, with the way this thing is set up, that it probably could use electronic, that's not you know, what you said at power all. steering on this thing. No, that's not what you were saying. What are you talking? You were telling me to man up. He just wasn't paying attention. I just manned up. Oh. Oh. Brooks, obviously we have some more work to do on this thing, so it's going to take a little time. You good with that? Maybe grab some sandwiches? Absolutely. All right, brother. Good Maybe a coaching a shake bit. for you and me, right? Absolutely. Thanks, man. That's not what you were saying at all. Matt, you've got some issues you have to deal with. No. No, it's like my boy Brooksy and I have been saying all along, you know, this is a great ride, but it can be a little bit tough to steer, even for the most, you know, muscular built guy. It's a handful. Dude, you are impossible sometimes. But anyway, here's the deal right here. We got this electric power steering unit from Wicked Built. Now, Wicked Built has an entire line of side-by-side -side and UTV accessories. They can hook you up with pretty much anything you need. But today we want to concentrate on making the steering easier, and we're going to do that with this electric kit right here. Now, what it's going to do is actually cut down on the steering effort by 40%. That's big, man. Yeah, that's a big increase in overall feel of the vehicle, yeah. you know what I mean? You're not fighting it, and it eliminates some of that harsh driver feedback. You know, you're out on the trails, and you hit a rut, or you hit a rock, and it, it throws the wheel back at you, and it can actually abuse you quite yeah. a bit out there. You know, so if you're not going to get fatigued as much driving this thing, you're going to have a lot more fun with it, because think about it. You can drive it harder, you can drive it faster, and you can drive it longer, and that's what it's all about, man. This is a really cool setup. Yep, you're going to enjoy it a lot more, and maybe you can insult me a lot less, perhaps. It's Just a not an insult if it's accurate, bro. Before we start yanking out all these steering components, it's always a good idea to make sure everything's lined up, right? So we'll line up the steering wheel and the tires, everything's going yeah. straight. That way when we put it all back together, we're aiming in the right direction. So we've got everything loosened up on the steering shaft down here, a couple of the joints. That way we can just take that steering wheel and get it out of the way so that slides up. Then we can get down here to the shaft. Now, actually, right next to the shaft is a little module. That's going to get loosened up, too. That's going to move over to the side because this bracket is going to move up underneath here, and that's what the whole assembly is going to mount on. So then we'll put that module back on there. We'll bolt that all up, and everything will be fine. But I'll get the shaft out of the way in the meantime. Yeah, Matt, you're doing a great job. Keep working down there. Thanks, dude. I work hard. <laughs> I'll pass you parts. You know, Matt's doing a good job getting the old stuff out of the way, but some of the technology that goes into this electronic steering is really cool. It's state-of-the-art, and it's something we're using on this Commander. Now, electric steering is what you'll find in production cars these days, but power steering used to be hydraulic driven. And it was good back in the day because it allows you to get a feel for it, makes it easy to drive, but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that come with something like this. Now, you think about it today, cars can parallel park themselves, and that all comes through electric steering. But there is a cool feature involved with this electric steering system. It's called um, torque sensing. And now what it's going to do is allow you to basically get the same feel all the time behind the wheel, whether you're sitting still in a vehicle and you have a hard time turning it without power steering, then at speed it makes it easy to turn. Well, with this, you're going to have 
that same feel all the time and that same feel when you're going down a, a trail and you, you hit a bump or hit a rut, you're, that torque sensing system in this is going to compensate for you so you don't get beat up. You get that same nice even feel whether you're trying to parallel park it, which you would never do unless you lived in a world where these things were your everyday drivers, which would be pretty cool, or you're going down the road, man. This system makes your life a whole lot easier. I like the sound of that world. Yeah, do you? For sure. With the module out of the way, we can go ahead and put the mounting bracket in place where it needs to go. Now you'll notice when the mounting bracket's up there and we tighten it up, right on the back side up against this square channel right here, the steering assembly, there's a hole cut in the mounting bracket. We're going to follow that hole all the way through that square channel right there because we're going to put a bolt through that. And that's going to give us a lot more support because you think about it, this unit weighs a couple of pounds and it's got all the torque on there because it's doing all the work. So you want the support bracket down here to be as strong as possible. Once that's all handled, we can get the module back into place and this thing will be coming together. What I need to do right now is go to break and get caught up on all this work that I've been talking about. But when we come back, we'll be a lot further along. This segment of Truck U is brought to you by CRC Industries, makers of Brake Clean, the original aerosol brake parts cleaner. This is nice, roller bearings and everything. All right. Hey, welcome back. We're continuing on where Matt left off with our Wicked Built electric power steering upgrade for our buddy's commander. Now, Matt had got a lot of the work done on the other side of the firewall. He's got one of his steering shafts in place. He put in our mounting bracket, relocated one of the modules. It's all starting to come together. We got the electric motor set in place. One of the nice things these guys did is you can see that they're actually practical with some of this stuff because they got that motor high and tight up out of the way. So everything's a nice tight fit. Now, the next thing we want to do is we got this set here. We got to kind of clamp shell it in place with this bracket and bearing. So this will go here and I'll just set it loosely in place so we can get an idea because what we've got to do is line up a bunch of splines and shafts to make this all work and to get everything tightened down you don't have any wiggle room left. So. so with the motor set in place now we have to deal with the steering shaft and it's really pretty simple you just got to make sure that you have it clocked correctly. So you've got the flat spot on the splines to match up and you want not only them to match up so you get the wheel on but you want to make sure that it's clocked correctly. So the steering wheel isn't on an angle this way or that way. And the way you're going to do that is by making that the compensation in the splines when you put on the shaft. So you've got to cheat a little bit to the left, it looks like, to get the steering wheel nice and straight. So that's why we're going to set everything in place first. We'll set everything up, make sure we're nice and straight, and then we can tighten everything down. It'll save us a little bit of time in the long run. Once we get all this bolted down and our steering wheel nice and straight, we can start playing with our wiring. So the steering wheel is in, the linkage is all connected. That's a lot of the grunt work underneath there. We got that done, that's good. Now, only thing we have left to do is to wire it up. Now, the good news with this particular system is we don't have to be an electrical genius to wire it. No, it's pretty simple. You just got a few connections you have to make. They've already got the quick connectors on, bringing power and controlling our motor. You're gonna go to the battery with either side with a ring terminal, and then you make a couple solder connections. One is gonna be from switch 12 volts to a little light, and then the other side is gonna go from that light to our box, and the brain is is what's going to tell it if you've got a problem. So that's an indicator light. If it starts flashing, you know we've got an issue inside, and that's where these two wires come into place. Now these are simply to clear codes if you've got a diagnostic problem. For the time being, we're just going to roll them up and leave them off to the side because you'll ground them later if you need them. Another good thing is the fact that this is kind of self-regulating. In fact, if it gets too hot for one reason or another, it's going to shut itself down, and that way it doesn't fry itself and you're not completely out the whole system. And all it does in that scenario is just go back to manual steering, which is what we had before. It's not the end of the world. Once it cools off, boom, it starts running all over again. So you're good. All right, so let's get this thing mounted in place and make our connections. All right. <clears throat> now we picked our spot for our indicator light right here. And the reason why we chose it down inside is this way, if you drive out in the sun, you might not see if it pops on. This way it's in a shaded area and you'll notice it if it kicks on. To drill it out, we chose a little bit of a stepper drill here. This is what's going to do is give us a nice round hole. Now we took a minute and marked it ahead of time for the 9 16th side. This is too far. We want a half inch hole. This way we know when we get to the line, we can stop and our hole will be nice and round and it'll be the right size. When you're soldering, two things you need to remember. First of all, make sure that you put your shrink sleeve on first. Second of all, make sure you've got plenty of heat in your torch.
Welcome back to Truck U. So we got our power steering kit from Wicked Built all installed. Everything is good. So now we know we're going to go fast. We're going to jump. It's going to handle. Everything is good. But what are we going to do when it's pitch black, right? And all we have is these little lights right here. Yeah, so I sent Matt on a mission. I said, here's your job, buddy. You need to find us some lights that are worthy of this vehicle, man. Bring the light. When I get challenged, I deliver, right? Take a look at this. You ready? All right. Let's all see right. what you got here. I got 50 inches, not 12 inches there, Whoa, right? wait, hold on, slow it down. Not 24, Dunno. not 30, not 40. I got Dunno. 50 inches of LED goodness right wow. there. Wow. Look at that. Mm. Now, I'm guessing, j yeah. just as a guess here, it's about 14,000 lumens. Probably very here. close to that. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. All right, so there we go, right? Now, all we have to do is mount it. So I'll get working on some brackets here. I think this is a two inch two. Let me double check just to be sure. All right, and two inches exactly. All right. All right. Cool. You got that? You yeah, want it? I got this. You want to hold on to that? It's safe and secure, baby. All right. You get on the brackets. Now, when it comes to wiring, it's a pretty simple deal. You've got the harness all set up for you, and there's a cool thing here because you've got not only your on-off switch, which is the obvious, but this is where it gets fun because you got high and low, and you hold it down for three seconds, and you've got strobe mode. When you're out in the woods and you're out in the trails having fun, not only is this fun and functional, but it becomes a party because now you brought the club to the woods, man. Dance party. <laughs> I hear you. We made up a couple brackets. They were nice and easy. Just a triangle shaped bracket with two arcs in it and a 90 degree bend. So the one arc right up here is what we welded to the support beam. And then this welds right there. That's for decoration on the side. But while we were doing this, we made sure we made sure everything was level. We double checked our distances and our measurements and all this, that, the other. That way the light bar doesn't hang like that, right? Yeah, and our mounting tapes actually land on these little tabs right here. So <laughs> now we just need to center it and we can drill our holes through it. But we've got to find the spot where the center for these holes is at. So. What I think the best thing to do, there's a number of different ways you can do it, is just kind of visually look at it and find what you think is centered, and then we can measure off that. Matt, go that way just a little bit. All right. Towards me, and that looks pretty close right there. All right. Looks good on this a little side. mark. All right. Right here, the edge of your tab. Go ahead and mark it on yours. And then we can flip it over. All right. And measure how far in we have to go to find the center from our tab. So we've got our edge. There you go. <sighs> right there where it's going to sit and it's about a half inch over and from the edge of the tab we are three eighths by one half into center hold on to this for a second got it so we'll go another three eighths over i won't drop it Put me about right there so this is where we have to put our center punch and then we can go ahead and drill it out and we are about done with the light bar man The Baja Designs 50-inch light bar is completely installed. It looks great. The brackets are done. They're all painted up. This is looking fantastic. Now all we have to do is take a look and see how it works. Yeah, man, you Come did on. a good job on those Shine brackets. It up, right? You ready? Wait, I yeah. think there might be a scratch on the front of that Wait. lens. Do you see that? No. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. See it now? That's nice, dude. That's high beam right there, That's right? That's 14,000 lumens coming your way. All right, yeah, here's high, there's low, low, and here That's is nice. something I think you're going to like. Buddy. Oh, dance party, baby. Come on now. Uh -huh. we got to drop the lights or something, right? Oh. <laughs> No, he didn't. <laughs> I think we got enough material to stop now. We thought it would be cool to come outside and actually take a look at how well this electric power steering works. Okay, so everything's off right now, and this is the typical steering that you would have. I know I'm sitting still, but I mean, it's all you can do. Bruno would rag on me to no end, but it's all you can do to turn that wheel a little bit. Now, simply just by turning everything on, you can tell, and you look at this, and how much easier it is. And we can turn that wheel just sitting here, just turning the wheel. It's a lot easier. You know it's going to be even easier when we're out riding around. Not even working. And that is how it's done.
Welcome to the ZMAX journey to the center of the engine. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about how carbon deposits can rob your engine of performance and fuel economy, and it's just all bad, right? But it's easy to fix by adding ZMAX to the fuel and to the oil, and that is going to eliminate your carbon deposits and get them all cleaned up and prevent them from coming back in the future. Now, case in point, let's take a look at this, this little intake valve. Yeah, you know, we've been tearing this engine down and revealing some of the carbon that's been stripped away from it just due to the ZMAX. Now, if you remember, we poured ZMAX in and we showed you guys what the intake runners looked like. Man, they were cleaned out. Now that continual flow went down through the cylinder head and you can see right here the end result is Look at that valve. Yep. I mean, the old one had carbon wrapped all the way around it. You can see you get almost like a blast of knocking that carbon away. And the only thing blocking at this point is just time in that valve stem. Now, if you look around the side here, you can see the seat from the valve. There's a little carbon deposit right here where that valve stem is blocking it, but all the way around it, it's cleaned out as well. So that means you're going to get a better seal and better performance just by pouring in ZMAX. It's pretty remarkable in a short period of time. It is, and it's not a miracle. It's not going to happen overnight. It is going to take time. Keep in mind, there was 20 years of carbon buildups. Yeah on this particular engine, right? And that's already cleaned up that side of it in a very short amount of time. So eventually that'll wrap back around and the Z-Max is going to be soaked into that metal so it'll prevent those carbon deposits from coming back in the future. Yeah, once again, you pour Z-Max in your fuel system. You pour it into your oil system. And what it's going to do is remove those deposits. The end result is going to be an increase in performance in an old engine like this. It'll give it some pep back and save you in fuel economy. Pretty cool. This tip is brought to you by Z-Max. Performance you can feel. Welcome back to Truck U. Let's say about a month and a half ago, you're rolling down the road, the AC's pumping out nice and cool, but those days are over. It's blowing nothing but warm air now, right? You have an AC leak. Well, here is an easy way to fix it. It's the Super Seal from AC Pro. The Super Seal can save you a ton of money by allowing you to repair leaks in your AC system and do it yourself. All you have to do is hook this up to the top of the can and this to the low uh, cooling port on your AC system. What it does, it repairs leaks in your system, whether the rubber or gaskets, O-rings, and the metal objects like the accumulator and the evaporator. It's just that easy to do and one can will treat an entire truck or car. It's an all-in-one kit, it's a permanent fix, and it's safe on all your R134A systems. It's the Super Seal from AC Pro. You know, it never fails. You spend the afternoon washing and waxing your ride. It's looking good. You're feeling good. You take the car out and man, Mother Nature attacks and all that hard work is for nothing. That is unfortunate, but that is where this comes in. It's the Armor All Extreme Shield Wax. It's specifically designed to repel dirt and debris more so than any other wax on the market, but it's also going to protect it with a protective barrier between your vehicle and the elements. Now those elements could be any number of things, or you've always got the neighbor that has the sprinkler pointed out into the road <laughs> like it's not on his yard, you know, and you have to drive under it twice a day, so that's fantastic. Yeah, a good quality wax is key to keeping your old ride or new ride looking good and maintaining that good look for a long period of time. And this will do it. It's the Extreme Shield Wax from Armorall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever right here on Truck U, LMC Truck presents a backstage look at a door. This is all the stuff you see behind the door that you don't see every day. Now, all of these parts right here are for a 1988 to 98 Chevy or GMC truck. Now this is all the stuff that's really abused in your truck because all these actuators, solenoids, handles are beat up every day. Every time you're getting in and out of your vehicle, these things are getting worn out. Now, if you've got any of these parts and pieces wore out or just about anything for your truck, whether it's a Chevy, GMC, Ford, or Dodge, go to LMC Truck, get one of their free catalogs. Look inside here, you've got all these parts, the diagrams, everything's blown up. You're gonna get the right part at the right price. You're gonna get it quick, either through their catalog or check out LMC Truck online. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Welcome back to Truck U. You know, one of the most abused parts of your vehicle and one of the ones that we talk about hardly ever around here are the doors, right? More specifically, the hinges that hold your door on. Think about it. Over time, you're opening it and shutting it all the time. Those hinges can go bad. Specifically, in some of the older GMs, we're talking about the 99 to 07 CK models right there. If you have one of those, you know what I'm talking about. The door hinges get loose. The door starts sagging a little bit and starts drooping, and it just looks a little bit junky, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Fortunately, it's an easy problem to fix. Yeah, and the way we're going to 
fix the problem we got with this Escalade is by using a kit we got from Total Automotive. It's the Total Automotive Deluxe Hinge Repair Kit for 99 through 2007 GM trucks and SUVs, the CK series like we've got here. Now it's something that you can do at home because you've got the right parts and the right tools you need to do it properly. It's something you can do in about 30 minutes or so. The real challenge or the only one you really come into in this process is you, know, you just need something to hold the door up when you take all the hardware away. The reason why you want to hold it in place is because you've got all those wire looms and connections going through that door and you don't want to have to go through and disconnect all those. So what we've done is pulled, got a cherry picker over here. We'll hold up the door with it. It'll stay in place. We can re uh, replace all our hardware, make our fix and boom, put it all back together. It's a pretty simple deal, but you know what? It's nice because you won't have that door sagging and swaying and move around on you. Nice little kit we've got from Total Automotive. Three bolts, it's an easy start. They're out of the way and now we can lift this door up. All right. Simply put, there are three bolts holding this door on right there. So you get those out of the way and then you gently lift it up off of the four pins that it rides on and then you get it safely out of the way. No problem, right? Now take a look at this. Here's the inner part of this hinge and you can see if you look real close, there's a lot of play in there right there. And that's where the problem's at. Yeah, and that's what we're gonna replace. We got our kit from Total Automotive. To get this hinge off though, you've gotta cut the bottom of the pin that's existing on the door right now. And Matt will use the grinder to cut the bottom off. Now, here's where you need the right tool to make this job easy and to do it right. And that's where you're gonna get this patented pin removal tool from Total Automotive. Now, I've seen people go ahead and take a hammer and chisel and just start wailing on the thing. The problem <laughs> is, is you miss once or twice, you damage the inside of the door, and usually the existing hinge that's welded on the door there it gets all bent up and this quick easy job turns into about a thousand dollar nightmare so if you've got the right tool it'll go nice and easy we got the pins all ground down right there so it's nice and smooth they should pop out nice and easy we take the pin removal tool and put that in place and then we just run this bolt up and it'll run it right out. Now this is what Bruno was talking about earlier where people will get on here and just start pounding the heck out of these these hinges and brackets and that's when things can get really expensive. So you just get on in here and this bolt will just drive this pin right straight up and out. And there we go. Next, we popped out the stock bushings that were right here and replaced them with these bronze ones. These are a lot less prone to wear and they're going to hold up a lot longer. So we can pop those in here, then this bracket is ready to go and that'll go in like so and we'll run these pins in and all we have to do is tighten this down, do it up on the top and the bottom and then we're ready to hang this door back on. And done. Hey, nice work, man. 14 minutes, 59 seconds. That's like a new record. That's awesome. That's dude. awesome. Hey, that's all the time we got for Truck E. We'll catch you guys next time. Hey, you're coming out. Mm. Nice work. Did you only grab one cookie? Come on.